Welcome back to the channel guys, Dwayne from Dynamic Graphics. Thank you guys for tuning in. All right guys, so very important topic today, but before we get into that, I know we were supposed to be getting onto the new media that came out. Um, I haven't received the full package on that yet, so we gotta put that on a hold until I get everything. But the show must go on. But we have a very important topic that I wanted to start off with, with all these topics that I'm gonna be coming out with. So you guys are gonna see the video is a little bit more shorter, but we're gonna hit topics that I know is gonna be valuable for you guys. And I hope it helps you guys as well too. This is a very important piece and by far the number one most important one for DTF. How I've seen in my time of doing DTF, and I've been doing it for a while now. I mean, you guys see me here with this one still. I've never had to use seven and eight. I don't have an internal circulation. I'm using the piggybacks that my support head gave me. So I'm doing everything and trying to keep it very simple and minimal. But the main part that you guys gotta get correct before even thinking about these things is keeping your room a controlled environment. I mean, your temp has, can't be too excessive and it can't really be too low as well too. But the main factor is your humidity. The danger area for you guys to probably be in is definitely in the 30s. You do not wanna be there. And this may cause hiccups if you're frequently there all the time for long term. It's good to keep your room controlled all the time. So I have a dehumidifier and I have a humidifier and they play against each other on times. So I'm dealing with water-based inks. I'm not dealing with Ecosol inks. So I never really had a problem with my rolling, but when it came to the Muto, I noticed things were happening even in the beginning. You know what I mean? But it wasn't anybody's fault but myself for not further educating and doing research. This is now mine's set at a good level. I mean, I rather, let me show you guys here. It's 42. Um, and we got 69 for temperature. So 42 on humidity. And that keeps my room very comfortable. Uh, I think that's perfect for me. I've never had a problem. And I'll tell you guys one thing. In the morning, I start up my machine. As I'm doing my nozzle check, I don't have to go back and do a short clean or anything like that. I'm just going right over and printing right after my, my nozzle check. And I'll show you guys a nozzle check that I just did this morning. Didn't do anything much, but just start my machine and let it run. Once I got my nozzle check, everything looked perfect. Why? Because my room is at a perfect temperature where my MUTO is able to respond to it very efficiently. You, you can print, you know, all day. I mean, you can cure properly. You can press without anything pulling off. Your day is going to be a lot easier once you control that. So let's get over to the machine and talk a little bit more about this. All right, guys. So let's talk about it. This right here is your golden ticket. I can't stress it enough. I know I said it in the beginning of the video, but you know, I've been focused on this for since February um, because it started to make sense to me for certain reasons. So we have 41 as my humidity and 64 as my temp. It's gonna change for the temp because I have the heat press on, so it's gonna kick in a little bit and probably jump up to like 67, 68. A perfect area for me would have to be 45 46 on humidity and 68 70 on temp that's just you know i've i've done 500 hoodies i've done you know 200 shirts and i never had to worry about banding um any wonkiness and anything like that so this right here grab yourself a thermo pro they might have different ones but i think this one is like the best brand it gives you the more accurate stuff so grab yourself one of these off amazon or something and let me tell you guys your boy has not even switched to seven and eight this whole time I've owned this unit. Um, is it, my seven and eight has just been solution all the time. And I'm still running the piggybacks uh, my support had sent me. Um, and I just pulled these out and run them. Now I know a lot of you guys uh, got steered away from the bags. I personally think the bags are perfect. They're the capacity that I need they work for me and I have no issues. Why? Because I'm keeping this in check. As long as you keep this in check, I don't think any of this problem should be going on with you guys with dealing with um, bad nozzle checks. So just keeping your levels over 40 is going to put you in the best area so you won't harm your or damage your machine or your head. But if you dip into like 
35 and getting low like that now i've seen people get into 38 it's nothing to bring yourself back up to 40 from that just do it very quickly but 35 and dipping very low you really have to do something you want this to stay what it is all the time so I, and for me living in the northeast i deal with hot summers and cold winters so hot summer to me i have to i have to pull humidity out of the air during the summertime and it sucks because you know you should see the amount of water i dump from this room in the summertime versus now where i am feeding it um moisture and i have a dehumidifier right here so i keep it right us along the side keep it away blowing on the opposite side but i want it to kind of balance in between with my uh, muto and i keep it at a safe distance so you know no moisture is hitting any electrical components in my muto or anything like that but that thing right there plays a good part because in my shop i have radiant floors and these heat up and what will it do it will you know kind of kill the moisture in the air so you need to feed it back somewhere else so as we're you know i have a bigger version but you know this is something that i just need for right now because it gets my levels um up to 45 46. i notice when i use my bigger one even with the timer on it it pours so much moisture in here it really looks foggy at some points so that right there is good to keep and you know just keep it moving if you're dealing with a situation where you're trying to balance you know heat or you know any type of temperature living in the northeast kind of got to accl acclimate yourself for that this time around now though um there's some points where i had to transition into the fall where it was still a little muggy out but it was getting a little cold so i had the the humidifier fighting with the dehumidifier and kind of balancing each other out but like i said guys this is your golden ticket follow it and not only that you know let me just give you a quick tip when i end my day your boy hits the you know capping station with solution and then after i add my solution i'll kick it back and then kind of head out the shop now there's a point because after three hours, my head's gonna uh, clean itself. So I'm left after that three hours without solution. So I'll roll in here after that three hours, hit it with solution again. Why? Because this machine is important to me. So whatever it takes for me to do that, keeping my machine on, this is what I'm gonna do. Now after that three hour point, I'll leave it. When I get up here in the morning, I will take my cartridges out, let them shake up. And right before I do my, uh, I start my machine up in the morning and let it do itself clean, I will pull it to the side and hit it with solution right before I clean. And what do you deal with when you get that? I mean, look at that. First one of the day, and this is every day. It's just keeping it simple, not getting too overwhelmed with stuff and controlling your environment. So I hope this helps you guys out a lot. Um, this was a, my number one important piece because I know there's a lot of you guys that uh, fight with not understanding that this is a must, you know, for you guys to control your, your shop. You guys have to have a steady control of your humidity and your temperature. If it's all over the place, this machine, like any other DTF machine, is going to give you problems. And it's nobody else's fault by you not educating yourself to understand that this needs to be controlled. All right, guys. So this is going to wrap up this video today. Hopefully you guys found the importance I was coming from when it, when it comes to this. Um, it's just very important to me. When I purchased my unit, I didn't have anyone to kind of turn to when it came to being educated on how to do this. So it's the reason why I sit back and take the time for everything and figure things out and figure why are things happening because i want to see the end of dtf problems ahead i don't want to see the same old problems with the white issue and that it all comes down to controlling your environment and I haven't had a problem with my whites the only problem i had i think was with my yellow uh my yellow channel and it was because of an air issue uh, because of a gasket so we figured that part out as well too so we understand that we can't get air in our lines and we need to change our gaskets and stuff like that and make sure we're utilizing 
all the useful tools and solutions to make sure that our head is being preserved well. And I thank you guys for tuning into the channel. I checked the channel the other day after being busy for so long. You guys are very great supporters and I thank you guys for that. And all the people I talk to too, all my, my guys in Florida, my guy in New York, you know, thank you guys for, you know, just even sometimes educating me on topics as well too because even though we're teaching we're still learning it's the reason why we network and it's great to network as well too when you're dealing with dtf or any kind of stuff when it comes to embroidery or you know htv but dtf and since we haven't found that really you know finish line yet from problems it's good to kind of touch bases with a lot of you guys and i appreciate you guys this is Dwayne from dynamic graphics thank you guys for tuning in till the next one peace